Tom Sabo. We're in Montpelier, Vermont at Montpelier High School. I'm a uh, science teacher. I teach biology and environmental science. Well, you know, we got this project that is um, uh, pretty cool. Most people think it's pretty cool. The majority of my students think it's pretty cool. I'd be lying if I said everyone. Where we have students uh, growing food and um, they're learning about biology, they're learning about life in general, sustainability through growing food. Um, the soil, as you'll see inside, the soil comes from food scraps that we impart, from food scraps that we compost um, right here from the cafeteria. And then the students grow food, that food gets served in the cafeteria, it's eaten by the kids, and then the scraps go in the bucket, then it's composted, it becomes soil, then it becomes food, then they eat it, and we have this nice little this closed loop within the city limits of Montpelier. Um, as you'll see when we go inside, my biology students are growing salad greens. Um, they grow other things too, but majorly, mostly salad greens, and we try to completely meet that need. Um, since then, uh, we've expanded, and some other students in the school, namely my environmental students, and other kids who have taken an interest, um, have been growing potatoes, uh, onions, squash, Some other things you can see from this vantage point is this, this project in general has, um, well the greenhouse is a centerpiece for this larger sustainability effort. It's also been a way to, to integrate the curriculum around the concept of sustainability. And we've brought many different classes uh, into it. Uh, the, the business class uh, developed the business plan. Uh, the physics class came up with uh, the, the solar panels. Um, they were looking, they did, did an alternative uh, energy feasibility study to power initially the request was to uh, to power a small water pump and they ended up getting really ambitious and, and they created that 2.7 kilowatt system across the ridge there some other cool things you can see from the outside well every bit of this has been fundraised uh, there's none of the money came from the, the school system the wood was uh, milled by a local guy here from trees that were knocked over in a storm in, in Hubbard Park, the city's park. It was built by students as part of a, a math summer school. And the other thing I like to point out, and this is the perfect vantage point for this, you know, the average American meal travels 1,500 miles between farm and plate, and, and we have it uh, in this kind of coincidence that the distance between that door and that door, which is the door to the cafeteria, is 150 Johnny. feet. And, and this is also, this is nice, nicely round. The distance between the edge of the potato plot and the door is 15 feet. So we go from 1,500 miles to 150 feet to, to 15 feet right there. This plot, this, this is the thing I, I share with everyone. This, this soil, when we first looked at it, was, was not too different from this just really compact, hard, nasty fill. We just dumped a ton of compost on there. And uh, we just turned it, let it sit, then we turned it in, then we planted potatoes. And the first season, right here in this, this rectangle here, we, we produced 800 pounds of potatoes, 15 feet from the cafeteria door. And that's something that everyone can absolutely do. Well, they need to know this. You know, it took me a while to figure this out. People aren't really talking about this. Increasingly, people are, and, and I like exposing them to this. And, and food is, I found, well, for me, has been the, the most successful um, avenue because it's so relevant. Everyone eats, absolutely everyone eats. And these kids live in a state, a relatively rural state, where food is produced. And, and they don't really, they didn't know if potatoes grew in the soil or on trees at first, most of them. And, and now they do. Now they absolutely do. Sustainability is about keeping humanity going. You know, when I grew up as, as an environmental environmentalist and a student of environmental science, it was about spotted owls versus loggers and, you know, fish versus fishermen. But sustainability really brings humanity into the mix. You know, it's about the social, economic, and environmental needs of the present and the future. And it's, it's about keeping humans in the mix. Yeah. We have numbers that, that show the pounds of food that has been diverted from the landfill and composted. We have numbers for the pounds of, of produce we've generated. We have numbers for the increase in, in salad consumption, something like 65% increase in, in salad bar meals. 
which which all show success. But you know, the truth is, there's certainly kids still not totally into this, but they've been exposed. And I think 10 years from now, 15 years from now, I'd love to find a way to assess what we've really done. When they recognize, you know, when all of a sudden this starts to come back to them and they recognize that they, they can grow food, they can, you know, cook and prepare, you know, healthy, whole, tasty food that, that helps not just them and their health, but the, you know, the local community and environment. So I think uh, even though we've seen some immediate results which are, are gaining some attention, I think the, the true results are yet to come. This is the Montpelier High School greenhouse. So, this is a pretty good stage right now. It's what, March 20th. We're eating a lot of our local food right now, our own food. All mixed greens in here. Here's a mescaline mix. Um, 60 varieties of, of lactuca and brassicas. Here's a gourmet mix. All this comes from high mowing seeds, a local Vermont seed company. Uh, Swiss chard right there. We got coming in, what else we got? There's some spinach in here too somewhere. We just recently planted it several other varieties, some Claytonia. <laughs> yeah. This is more of the gourmet. Oh, here's some spinach. We do a cut and come again method, so the kids come in here um, before school on Mondays and Wednesdays and they harvest their trays, they, they weigh it, they enter the data into the computer, and you can see all the stems here. So this past Wednesday, all the big spinach was taken and here's the smaller stuff that's gonna come back up. Pretty soon we're gonna start starting a lot of the different plants that we'll be planting outside. We also start a lot of tomatoes that we sell as one of our fundraisers, as tomato uh, starts, which people are excited about. Kids are very different. Um, depends a lot on their background. The general response, I mean, it's well received, generally speaking, by most kids. They like getting out of their seats. They like getting outside. They like coming out here. Um, I think most of them like the responsibility. Uh, the, the daily responsibility was one of the unanticipated lessons. Because you know, these kids will have pets that they get and then their parents take care of them. If they have a house plant, you can ignore and abuse a house plant for, for weeks at a time, as most of us know. But you can't, you can't ignore plants in, in the greenhouse in these conditions. In a day or so, they'll be toast. So they need to come out here on a daily basis. And, and some of them like that, some of them really learn from that. Well, you know, 1987, I was a senior. I was the Montreal Protocol and, and the, you know, the hole in the ozone. So I grew up with a hole in the ozone, and I grew up with massive deforestation in, in the rainforests. And those two issues always really resonated with me and freaked me out a little bit. And um, you know, I was in the first environmental clubs in my high school, and helped start the first environmental clubs in my college. And uh, I was just always attracted to it. It's tangible. It's tangible. And as an educator, and that's always been something I've kind of been drawn to. You know, ex explaining things, sharing things, you know, sharing things you've learned, whether it was a, a new band or a great movie, just that, that yearning to, to pass it along. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of things that you teach, it, it's hard to tell, it's hard to assess how much learning has been done, but this is, this is tangible. And it affects them on many levels and it affects the community at large.